Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to Holy Habitus. And today we're delving back into the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5, verses 27 to 30, where Jesus talks about adultery and lust. A really important and challenging issue in our over-sexualized and permissive culture, I think. And one which, as Christians, we're not always very good at talking about. We tend to bury it and so compound the problem. But Jesus is very straightforward in his teaching on this topic. And he does what he does throughout this uh, section of the Sermon on the Mount. He starts with a law against an external sin. And then he traces it back to its root cause in the heart. So he says, you've heard that it was said, do not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. And if your right eye causes you to sin, you should gouge it out and throw it away, for it is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, you should cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. Goodness, some strong teaching there, isn't it, on uh, this, on this, the importance of this area of our discipleship. And he starts off with that observation, really, that it's no good congratulating yourself for not having committed adultery if actually you are already looking lustfully and thinking lustful thoughts, because in reality you've set off down that road. And we may fixate on the final consummation of that process, but actually we're well on our way if we are taking that second and third and fourth glance and, and beginning to adopt that unholy contemplation in our heart. We need to root it out. And Jesus gives this illustration is quite a violent image of gouging our eyes and cutting off our hand not because he's telling us to actually go and gouge our eye but saying we do need to be ruthless to the point of doing ourselves a violence so for example if you have an issue with lust and pornography for example you may need to get rid of your computer and go and use the friends while they're there and that feels very costly and embarrassing and in our internet savvy age it's quite inconvenient but that's the price you pay um, for life Another example, if you have a, a work colleague who you're aware of, there's a very real danger that you may develop an unhealthy relationship with them emotionally or sexually, you may need to move jobs. And that's a costly process, it involves redundancy and all of that kind of stuff, but that's the price you pay for life. It's a transferable principle. If you're an alcoholic, you may need to not go out with friends to the bub pub or the bar anymore because that's where you're susceptible to be tempted and to fall. Be ruthless. That has a cost, but ultimately it means you don't pay the greater cost of your whole life going down the chute. Jesus is strong about this. So maybe this week, ask yourself the question with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, is there anything I need to be ruthless about? The great thing is, this is a life-giving and a freeing thing. It means you won't have that Damocles sword of temptation hanging over your head all the time, and you can get on with living the life you're called to live.